Chairman and CEO, Libra Group, Chairman of the Leadership Council, Concordia. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you. I believe anger is a misunderstood emotion. Whilst it is clear to us all that misdirected anger can lead to destruction, it is less clear, I believe, that if we channel our anger wisely and govern it with a degree of empathy, it can actually be a source of positive change. Now, Concordia is an organization that came into being because two young men were angry with the social injustices that exist when measured globally. With the creeping vines of pessimism that seem to be permeating many Western societies. That the problems were too big and the obstacles were too tall. To which their response was, no. And here we are. They are changing the world for the better. Concordia is giving a voice to those unseen and unheard from all over the world. An organization premised on possibility, not limited by any ceilings of cynicism. An organization that was built from scratch by the toil and the sweat of people who were believed in. And I, for one, I'm in awe. And I salute all of them. The entire team that has made this summit possible was faced with a choice. Between, on the one hand, duty, that sense of what should be done for the collective good, versus desire to focus on one's own needs. Well, duty beats desire with all of them, and boy, am I proud. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to share a story with you. A few months ago, I met a 25-year-old New Yorker living in Greece. Sam was working in one of the refugee camps under traumatic conditions, helping people to come to terms with tragedy helping young children find their parents. Now the what Sam was doing and the how Sam was doing it was very clear to me. The why was not. And so often in life, the why is so much more instructive. So I asked him at the end of our meeting, of our meeting, I said, why are you doing this, Sam? Why is a 25-year-old from New York City here in Greece helping and contributing with human suffering instead of aiming to work in a law firm, a bank, or going to college? The answer said it all. Mr. Logothetis, in 1942, my great-grandmother was on a train heading to Auschwitz with 29 members of her family. They managed to throw off the train, my then 12-year-old grandmother. She survived the fall. Tragically, she was the only survivor of her entire family. She lived off the land for a few months and then was taken in by a kind family who looked after her at great peril to themselves. She then met my grandfather when she was 15. They had three children. Two of the children died. One survived. That is my father. That is why I am doing this. Now, there was no moral superiority in his words. His sense of duty and responsibility to contribute to other people's future emanated from the kindness that was shown to his grandmother by that family all those years ago. Oh, we have choices as well. The people who took in Sam's grandmother had a choice. They could have opened their door or left it shut. 
we face similar choices today. Only there is less talk of opening doors and more talk of building walls. But these walls of fear, prejudice, and pessimism do not keep things outside as much as they trap things inside. They do not protect us, they diminish us. Instead of building walls soaked in the fear, in the mortar of fears, should we not be raising ceilings of belief, tolerance, and inclusiveness? Now, the most dangerous walls are not those built of brick or steel, but those built of indifference and passivity. I often ask myself, ladies and gentlemen, why? Why is it that in a place of great suffering you find the truest of greatness? A children's hospital? A refugee camp? An orphanage? Why is it that some people in this world have everything, yet nothing? Whilst others have nothing but everything, all at the same time? We are blessed to live in a Western world where self-determination is our greatest unsung and unacknowledged freedom. What a precious right that is. And we must never forget the pain and the suffering others endured to grant us this right. We did not earn it. We were granted it. They earned it. And the only profound way that we, we can express our thanks to those who came before us and sacrificed so much for us to, is, is for us to earn the thanks of others. It is to earn the thanks of others. Is it not instructive that the givers in this world are always happier than the takers? But where are those others today? They are in Syria, they are in Greece, they are in Libya, among many other places. Now, it is simply not humanly acceptable to hear of refugee camps housing 3,000 people with limited security, enabling degenerates to come in every night and rape young children. Yes, that is happening every night. It is not morally acceptable for humans young girls to be housed as animals by the simple fact they were born there and not here. It is simply unacceptable. It is unacceptable that countless young children have escaped the worst oppression humanity has to offer only to end up in Greece, a country whose people have suffered so much over these past years is totally overburdened by multiple simultaneous crises only for these children, children, to be missing. Unaccounted for children by the hundreds. Now, just a few days ago, I was told the story of a young mother who was raped in succession by four different people smugglers in front of her eight-year-old and ten-year-old children. A friend of mine received a call of desperation, disguised himself to get into the camp and got them out. Now they are now safe and my friend is a hero. You see, there are still righteous heroes amongst those wretched villains. But I tell you, this human barbarism is happening in front of our eyes. Your hearts would bleed tears, ladies and gentlemen, if you could see up close and personal this human tragedy. Measured against this human suffering, we are just not licensed to complain about a thing we have no license. On the contrary, we are burdened 
by the duty to contribute. How privileged are we? How punished are they? Is this time to get angry? This is not the way it is supposed to be, nor continue to be. How often have we seen striking images that sear our souls? The lifeless body of a three-year-old boy on a Turkish beach, the five-year-old pulled from the rubble in Syria. Yes, they touch our hearts, but that is not enough. We must do something about it. The more one has in life, the greater the accompanying moral duty to give back that exists. Our group has worked tirelessly with governments, NGOs, and foundations on the front lines of this crisis. There is refugee blood in my veins, my brother's veins, my parents' veins, the veins of many people in our group, and many people in this room today. Now, we as a group have a very unique ability to help. We have a lot of business in Greece. We have infrastructure there. We have capabilities on the ground. Together, we can be far more effective than alone. Now, there is a passage in the Bible. It is an idea you will find in every holy book. Not thine to finish the task, but neither are thou exempt from it. If you agree with this, if you share our anger, please contact me. Email me at george.logothetis at libra.com. If you want a channel to help, if you want a trusted and dependable partner on the ground, then together we can work to alleviate and solve this terrible situation on the shores of the Eastern Aegean and beyond. Please contact me and we will get back to you. Now perhaps we cannot save everyone, but that does not relieve us of the responsibility to save someone. And I am asking you here today to get angry. And out of that anger, help us so that we can help them. Kindness is free. Kindness is free. It costs nothing. And we need to lead with a sense of moral clarity and social purpose. We need to convert anger into action. We need to lead with moral authority, the highest form of authority. For a lack of morality poisons the waterfall of humanity with badness, not goodness. And right now, the world is watching. But it is history that will judge us. Those who have much, yet give little. Those who have little, yet give much. History rarely gives us the chance to redeem ourselves. And it often does tempt us to repeat the same tragic mistakes. Our choice. Now, as I look around this room, I see leaders, heads of companies, heads of state, heads of NGOs. Let us be mindful that if we as leaders look the other way, we give a moral pass we give a moral pass for others to do the same. Well then, lead. Let us lead. Let us lead. Thank you very much.